welcome back. Um, if this is your first time here, greetings. I'm Naomi um, and this is my channel all about all things sewing. Uh, this is a three part series in collaboration with The Rag Shop uh, where I have drafted a sundress a little bit you can see behind um, and I in my second video I constructed the bodice this video I will be constructing the skirt um, with a ruffle hem and uh, pockets so uh, yeah if you haven't watched the other videos you can go back to my channel and watch those um, love to know what you think um, if you do enjoy the video, please like and subscribe down below so I can share a little bit more and I'd love to know what you think. Um, so uh, today I am going to be, my iron is going, uh, today I'm going to be constructing a skirt from three pieces. So I've got one front piece, which I think I mentioned in my um, first drafting video that it was so I measured the front bodice and I added 75% for that. And I've kind of roughly measured where I would like to come to before I add the ruffle. Um, and I've got two back pieces because there'll be a zip going into the back. Now, a lesson in count three times and then cut. Um, I've had to add a seam because I miscalculated at some point I wrote 26 instead of 36 and went back through my calculations and checked them but was completely blind to the fact that I hadn't written down my measurements properly um so the back piece I had to add a bit luckily I had enough um and this is going to match up with a seam in the back so it won't look too obvious um so these are my two back pieces and then I have two ruffles for the bottom I may have to add a bit to the to the back one um, but yeah I've got enough to do that so they're the two ruffles for the bottom and then I want to add some inseam pockets so I use for my polka wawa plum dress I like these pockets uh, so I've used the pattern for those uh, for that one and I've cut four of those to add into the the seams on the skirt Yes, so uh, today I'm going to be constructing the skirt, um, gathering to add it to the bodice, um, inserting a zip in the back. Probably well, I'll add the ruffle on the bottom first and then adding a zip, zip to the back, an invisible zip uh, and finishing off. So yeah, that's what I'll be up to today. And just to show what I'm wearing today, this is an Ogden cami. Uh, and it's made from a bit of leftover fabric. So there's a seam and you can see up the back where I cut it to try and piece bits together to get something out of it. And I had to do the, the lining in another in another cotton lawn. But uh, yeah, I love this fabric. It was from Fabric Godmother. Um, and I'm <laughs> never in a good position for this. My estuary skirt uh, from So Liberated in a seersucker um i yeah i love that skirt pattern it's one of my it's put actually my favorite skirt pattern i've made i made three or two and i might have them cut out <laughs> but i love yeah it's a really nice pattern i've made other skirts in other patterns but actually i think i will return to this one as my my tnt um yeah lovely pattern so just to share with you before I start on the skirt, this is the bodice. Now my, it doesn't fit my mannequin very well. Um, it fits better on me, but you can see I've constructed the, sh the straps and the ruffle, which go, the ruffle goes all the way down to the back. And then in here, we've got the ties, which open. And then at the back, there will be, I think maybe like a large, um, bar and latch and bar which hook and bar yes here to 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 keep that together and then the zip is going to run through through here um and all the way down into the skirt so i'm going to be constructing i'll add the pockets to the seams of the skirt first so slightly different angle working with the light a bit more uh, so I'm going to start by attaching those pockets onto the side seams. 
So you can see there, what I've done is I've held it up and kind of measured where it would work for my, my hand. And then I've measured down. So I've actually done 10 centimeters down to that notch on the pocket. Um, so I'll attach the, the notch 10 centimeters down on each piece. I can notch those pieces, but I know it's 10 centimeters. Um, pinned it in place and then stitched it along the seam allowance and pressed the seam towards the pocket and I'll do that for all the pieces so it'll, they'll go on the side seams at the back and the two side seams of the front piece and I'll do that all the way. So I've attached the pockets and now I am going to pin the side seams so attaching one back piece to the side I pin it down to the pocket around the outside of the pocket and down the side again and then I'm going to stitch the one centimeter seam allowance to the top of the pocket here and then all around the edge um, and you may have noticed I've overlocked the side seams before I'm sewing them up because I like to press them open um, and then once that's done I will overlock the pocket bag as well uh, you can do those beforehand, but I like to overlock them together. So, um, yeah, so stitching and overlocking the pocket bag on both sides. You're ready for the next step. So I've joined the seams, the side seams. So we've got, there we go, the front joined. So you can see on the inside, there's that pocket. So I've pressed the pocket to the front and I've overlocked all around the pocket bag and press those to the front so that when when it's worn and it's swinging back and forth at the moment but when it's worn the pocket will sit to the front like that so uh, the next step to do is to gather these pieces and attach them to the body so I'm gonna put gather stitches across the back one back piece and leave the threads long there, then do another two rows of gathering stitches across the front and then, and then more on the other back piece. Um, I will do that one. I've In my last video, I showed how I um, do my gathering. So I won't do that again because the last video was quite long. So I will put my gather stitches in, I will gather it, and then I'll show you how I attach it to my bodice. So I've put in my gather stitches there. You can see there's two rows, two rows of stitching there. Yeah, um, and you can see that the threads are at each of the side seams. Um, so I will start to gather those up. Um, I'll gather them roughly and then I will show you how I attach them to the bodice and arrange them. Um, but I'll have to do it after the school run. So it may be on another day, so you might see me wearing something new. So I've gathered up the skirt up to those points, and this will all be evened out. So I've done the three areas. So we've got the, the two back pieces and the front. Um, and we're going to attach to the bodice. So, um, right sides together I'm going to start on the joint at the side seams so it's going to go to here I'm going to attach match up the side seams from here so got lots of threads there but if we attach so joining those making sure I've got those seams matching and pin those in place and then we can arrange the gathers so I've actually got my seams open on the side so I'm going to pin those open make sure that they're matching up those seams and then it's a matter of adjusting the gathers to fit so I've measured it against it and they fit but I'm just going to redistribute 
those gathers, make sure they're even and pin that one in place, plenty of pins. So I've pinned my skirt to the whole bodice all the way along and distributed the gathers fairly evenly. Um, and then as I sew, I'll just check on those. There's one there that I'm not need to adjust. Um, so I'm going to stitch, attach my skirt to the bodice, um, one centimetre seam allowance, and then I'm going to um, overlock that edge as well. So that's that'll be attached. So I've attached my bodice. And now I'm just going to just have a little look to check that I'm happy with the gathers all around and I can unpick and redistribute a little bit if I need to, but I'm pretty happy with those. And once I'm happy with those, then I can overlock. I don't want to overlock before that. Um, so I'm just going to overlock that seam all the way around and then we'll be ready for the next step. So this is overlocked all the way around. So we've got a skirt and a bodice attached. Um, and now the next step is to join the back seam. So this seam needs to be joined all the way up. So we'll take the facing I'm going to remove the facing out of the way. So the zip will be going, I need to join that a little bit better. The zip will be going to here. So we need to measure down as far as the zip is going to go. And then I'm going to join the back seam up to the point where the zip will be. And then we can put the zip in from there. So because I don't have a, a pattern, this is my own design. I don't have a mark on my dress where the zip is going to where the zip is going to go in. So I know that I want the top of the zip to meet just here. So it will go in just at the top of that opening. So there's my back of underneath my ties. So I want the zip to come up to here. So what I do is I'm just going to measure, lay the zip on top and measure where the zip ends. And I can go slightly above the end of the zip. This is a long zip and I probably don't need that much room, but I have made things in the past where I can't get my hips into them. So better to be a bit longer. So I'm going to put a pin here to mark how far I want the zip to go so it's going to come down to here and then I can join the back seam up to that point so I'm going to stitch up the back seam just to that point so join those two um, and that's where my zip is going to come down to so I can join those pin those seams together so I'm going to pin all the way up to that pin that I've marked and that is going to be the closed back seam in my dress and the zip will go in above that and I'm using an invisible zip um, and I recently did I discovered that I didn't have the invisible zipper foot for my faff so I actually put one in by hand which I thought would be really really tricky and it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't too bad at all so um, and then I discovered that one of the old feet I had actually worked on this. Um, so that's as far as I'm going to go. So I'm going to pin off the, not a pin in there. I'm going to sew my back seam on my one centimetre seam allowance all the way up to that pin there um, and then leave the rest open for the zip. So, so I've sewn that seam together. And I'm going to press that seam open and overlock both edges 
just to finish those but I'm going to press them open so I can put the, the zip in in there so I'm going to put in my zip and the conceal zip we're going to attach to one side first and I want the center of that zip so this is the right side this will be the side facing out and the, the wrong side actually has the the teeth on the inside so it looks like this so this I want to place along the seam and I want the center of that zip to sit on the seam allowance so I've just drawn a little pale line with some chalk to mark my seam allowance which is one centimeter and I'm going to match up my uh, top of my zip so we're placing the right side down on the seam so there's the top so I'm gonna pin it and make sure it's gonna pin and when you are putting in a zip it's sometimes a good idea to baste it in in fact it's often a good idea because pins will move it around somewhat and it's hard to to sew with sometimes so I'm pinning it in first and I'm just going to check that that the center of that zip is sitting on top of that line so in this case my zip tape is going to the edge because I've got a one centimeter seam allowance so it's matching up with the edge of the tape and I'll just have a little look underneath again and I can see that that center of my zip so I've got it upside down at the moment, so this is the way the dress will be. So I'm pinning it in like that. Okay, so it's right side of the zip to the seam. Okay, so I'm going to pin all the way along, matching up the seam edge, which I've overlocked as well. So not just that seam that I work, I finished, but I overlocked all the way up. So that's without... Um, and I just was careful when I was overlocking that I didn't take any more of the seam allowance off. So all the way down to where my seam meets at the bottom. I'm going to go all the way up to the end. So that's all pinned in. And just checking that it when that zip is in, that my zip will come to the top. I'm just checking that my it's at the top of the zip teeth, and actually, I think I might have gone too high, so I'm just gonna check it there because mm, I want I want the top of the before I hit the facing, so there, I want this to be able to fold down over the top, that facing. So I think we're okay, actually. Just make sure when that's sewn in, that it can go over the top. Yeah, okay, so um, I'm going to, oops. So I'm going to sew in my zip all the way down on one side. Um, I'm going to open that zip to do that. Um, so I'm going to use my invisible zipper hook. So I've got this one here um, and it allows the teeth to go in and it lifts the teeth up slightly so that I can get right into the edge of that. So I'm going to get that set up. So you can see where the little foot is lifting that zip. So it's rolled over and it lifts it up out of the way as I sew. And I'm just going to see how it keeps it out of the way. And I'm going to sew all along to the end. So you can see where I have sewn in, sewn on one side. Um, 
as close as possible to those teeth. You can see that if I lift it up, you can see, you should be able to see the stitches under there where they're slightly underneath the teeth. Um, and we won't really be able to tell until you zip it up if it's properly concealed, but you, you can tell that it's underneath. Um, so I'm going to do the other side exactly the same. Uh, do the right sides of the zipper together with the right sides of the seam. Attach that all the way and then I'll show you what we do. Okay, so the moment of truth <laughs> with the conceal zip. I've attached it to both sides. I'm going to turn it right sides out. Um, so it's attached to both sides. And it hasn't been neatened at the top or the bottom yet, but I've got them there and I'm just going to carefully zip up. And you can see that it's pretty concealed. You can't see that, that zip in there. So it's all nicely concealed. And I think I do love a concealed zip and it's a lot easier than some other zips to put in, I think. Um, so that's nicely concealed in there. And then the top and the inside here, I'm going to hand stitch so get those little tapes out of the way and fold that facing over and that seam allowance the facing will go here over the top and I'll hand stitch that in away from the teeth so it doesn't get caught but just oh, that'll be hand stitched in so that'll hold the facing down as well and it'll just keep it nice and neat so I'll hand stitch that one later when I'm sitting on the sofa. <laughs> so we've got zip in and at this point I would be hemming the bottom of the dress but we've got the ruffle to add. So um, I'm going to attach the ruffle, the short ends of the ruffle together and make it one big loop to be attached onto the skirt. Um, so then that will be attached here so that if you can remember the ruffle the skirt was um 1.75 times so 75 percent more or three quarters more uh with then the bodice to give a little gather and i've done the same with the ruffle on the bottom so it's got uh, three quarters of a length longer than the bottom so um I'm going to get my pieces ready to show you how to add the ruffle. Okay, so the last part to do. Um, I've got these long pieces that will make up. I've got two long pieces, one for the front, one for the back, which will make up the um, the kind of tier at the bottom. So there'll be the gathered tier at the bottom. Um, and I'm going to attach, make sure, because there is a, this print isn't directional, but there are, I've kind of kept the, the large red flowers up so I'm going to make sure that I get those the right way round um, and I'm going to join this into one kind of big uh, circular piece so I'm just going to make sure I get these the right way um, so I'm going to join the short ends together to um, create one big round, round circular piece if you like um, and then I will show you what I'm going to do next. So I've joined my short ends together to create one long loopy piece. And this is why this is going to be kind of the last bit, but the epic bit. So I um, need to gather all around the long side of one side and then attach it to the skirt. Now I could do my hem on this while I've got it but I do want to just check the dress on and just then check that the hem is at the right length so what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather do some gather stitches between one seam and the other on both sides and then I'm going to attach that to the bottom of the dress uh, so that'll be two rows of gather stitches 
all the way along one side and all the way along the other and then it's all got to be gathered up <laughs> and put on the bottom of the dress and this is the point when I often go why did I add a tear to the bottom because <laughs> it takes ages okay so I've put gather stitches all around and I've started to kind of gather it up and I'm going to match it the side seam so we've got a front piece and a back piece so I'm going to pin the right sides together of the dress um, and I'm just going to pin I've gathered a little bit but I'm just going to pin the side seams on so I can kind of hold it up a bit easier if I can find them there we go um, so I'm going to pin right sides together so making sure yeah I've done my gathering on the right side there we go um so pin it this way find that side seam and I'm going to pin side seams together just making sure that I match up their seams pop the pin in that one um and you can kind of mark halfway along the ruffle um, or the tear um, and mark halfway along the skirt just to make sure that you've got kind of even gathers so I'm gonna pin that one so I know that I've got so we've got the ruffles gathered there just gonna kind of see that it matches up roughly and then I'm going to start spreading those gathers out so that they're more evenly spaced and it's just kind of a by eye thing just kind of checking and looking and seeing that the gathers so I've got make sure that of both ends So I'm going to redistribute those and pin those, those on and make sure they're even all the way along and then I'll do the same on the back which is needs to be gathered a bit more. So I've attached my tear to the bottom, there we go, and that's gathered all the way around, so I'm quite happy with that and I've tried it on um, and rather than doing a very I'm going to do quite a small hem because I'm quite happy with the length so um, yeah I'm going to do kind of a if I do two centimeters one centimeter turn up and then another um, yeah I think that'll be the right length or maybe I might actually use yeah the same technique that I used on the flounce or the the, the strap ruffle here um, and do like a baby hem um, to keep that uh, really nice and neat and yeah, quite a tiny hem because I think I want the length in that so I think that's what I'll do so um, I'm going to do baby hem all the way round if you want to see how I did this and you haven't watched my other video my second video I showed how I did this baby hem rolled hem without the rolled hem foot all the way around um, and it's not as tiny as it might be on a finer fabric but it's the same technique and it gives a really nice neat finish so I'm going to do that finish all the way around the bottom of my dress so I won't show that again because that's in the other video so you can go and have a look at that and then once that's done um, I just need to do some hand sewing which I so as I've explained, I'm going to turn that facing inside on the top of the zip. Just need to um, get that top of the zip inside that facing, fold it over, and then I'm going to hand stitch that facing down. So I'll do that later on. And then the only other thing to do is I originally was going to put some buttons on these these straps that are holding the back together 
um, and the tie will be going over these so the tie will be hiding those so instead of a button I've actually got um, it's all missing now I've actually got some hook and bar little hook and a bar to go on those so I'm going to put two of those on there um, and that will keep that closed with the strap over the top so I will finish my hem do some hand stitching and then I'll be ready to show you the finished dress okay just to show you how I'm attaching the facing so I've already started so I go where that folded facing is folded against the edge I go into the tape a little bit there and then up and then back into the just along the edge of the turned in hem the edge of the facing where it's been turned in and then just a little bit of zipper tape and then edge of the facing. I'm just going to take that pin out. And you can see we're just going into the edge of that and then back into the tape and not too close so that it doesn't catch. And we'll keep going all the way along so that that facing is nicely sewn down. So here's the finished dress and I'm pretty happy with it. My ruffles on my sleeves, my straps and uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the fit of the, the bodice. So it was worth redoing that one. And then yeah, my the exposed back is not very exposed, especially with the bow, but uh, yeah, the bow is a little heavy in this fabric, but all in all, I'm pretty happy. I'm glad I added my ruffle on the end to kind of echo those, but yeah, my ruffle sundress.